And I just want to stay in this atmosphere here. And I just asked the worship team to um, stay up here. And hi, all kids and youth. We're so glad to have you. And um, I had actually told uh, Pastor Nate and Mona, um, I'm kind of going to be talking to the, and I know Pastor Nate probably has something too, but um, we just felt so strong, um, God highlighting you guys. And for you to know you're valuable and you're important to the plan of God at the age you're at. You don't have to wait to become an adult. And I'm going to try not to cry because I've been crying on and off all day today. But um, in that first song of uh, Reckless Love, you could hear the kids. And I was so overwhelmed. And I thought, you know, I've always pictured heaven and times of worship to be amazing. But I think how heaven's going to sound when we worship. You're going to hear children. You're going to hear kids, probably more than adults. And, and I think we'll be surprised at that. And uh, I also think we'll be surprised at who's leading worship around the throne. Because, you know... Um, you see all throughout the Gospels that Jesus asked the kids to come. You know, the people, the disciples shunned the kids away. They shunned youth away. They said no, and Jesus said no, don't forbid them to come. And he actually compares our, like our faith should be like the faith of a child. And I think there's a special sound. There's a special sound that you guys carry children and youth, there's a special sound that you carry that we, that we don't carry. And it's a special anointing, and it's a special kind of faith. Because God actually tells adults that your faith should be like their faith. It's so pure. There, there's something special about it. And so tonight, what I saw and, and just heard so clear, and this was over a month ago, I just, I just... Um, it was actually in the middle of the night. I woke up and I, I just knew that this service was to be dedicated to your generation, to you guys. And it's to be, um, here's the thing. You know, we can, the word of God is amazing. And, and you guys should be in the word. You should be reading Bible stories. You should be having your devotion times. The word of God is alive and it speaks to you. And it, it doesn't just speak to adults, it speaks to you. It's alive to you. So, you know, if the word's not alive, you can say, thank you, Lord, the word is alive to me. Thank you, Lord, you speak to me. But there's also another component that God uh, wants us to have up with the word, combined with the word, and that's called the spirit. Okay? And how many of you know, kids, you've learned about the Holy Spirit recent, right, in your class? And the Holy Spirit is your helper, the Holy Spirit goes with you all the time. And so it's something about the Word and the Spirit. And I grew up, I grew up having the Word and the Spirit. And if you don't have both, you're missing something. And so our goal as pastors in this house is to create an opportunity for you guys to not just hear the Word, but also to have moments. And that's what I heard over tonight's ser service was marked moments. Marked moments, because you know what? You can hear about the word. And youth, you can hear the word. And your parents can talk to you about Jesus. And you can know the word. But you guys have to have the real. You guys got to have the, the, that real relationship with him. And you know where I find moments with the Lord that were real is like these moments right here presence moments, stuff that it can't be taken away from me. And what is that? That's my real moment with God. And someone could come and say, oh, you know, you didn't have that. And you know what I'd say? Yeah, I did. Because it was real to me. And so what we saw tonight is to lay hands on each of you. And we're going to share a, a little bit of scripture here. But I found it interesting because I um, talked to 
uh, I think it was Caleb, either Caleb or Samuel, I don't remember, but um, I think it was Caleb. And I said, we were talking the other day, and okay, this is a plug for camp too, okay, parents? Send your kids to camp. Because there's marked moments at camp. And you know what? Don't let, don't let um, other things get in the way of that. God moments for your kids. Like, it's a non-negotiable for my children. I let them make choices, but camp is a non-negotiable. You, you go. Why? Because it's an investment. I don't look at it like it costs me 450 bucks or whatever it is. It's an investment to my kids to get spiritual moments. There's moments there. So that's just a plug for that. And believe God together for the finances if that's an issue. But there's moments, and I was talking to Caleb, and um, I said something about camp, and um, I said, Caleb, what, what are some moments that you've had? Like, tell me a moment that you've had with God. He said, oh, I remember my moment, and I said, what was it? And he said, it was when we, and this was years ago, three or four years ago, I bet, when we took him last, and he said, um, I had a moment at camp, and this was at youth camp, the one that Nate, uh, Pastor Nate teaches at, and he said, I had a moment at camp where they called me up on stage, and they prayed for me, okay, marked moment, he remembered that from years ago, why, because God touched him, we can't negate the presence, adults, you, you got to have those moments. You got to create these moments, not just here at church. Our job here is to do that, but you got to do these moments at home. You got, this is something, the word and the spirit. And what, what does it do? It opens you up to hear you, hear you, remember. It's those moments with God that it, it like, it holds you. And I would say, I know I wouldn't be where I'm at today without those moments, those moments. And they're so key. And if you were here when Trey and Joy were here, they talked about something special about the kids and youth, this generation of this house. And I believe it's really a call to this generation church-wide, but specifically tonight to this house. And there's something special on you guys. And so um, I I just saw us praying for you and for you guys just stepping into the fullness of what God has. Uh, Another story I'm telling you, these, you guys are world changers, like, and it starts now, and like in our schools, we were at, a, we were at um, sixth grade orientation, and I told him, I walked up to the bleachers, and you know, they sit everybody down, and they're talking about the year, and I was just looking around, I was really trying not to like laugh, because I could just see, like, I could see the kids of this house, and just being like, taking over the schools in a good way like occupying you guys are called to lay hands on the sick you guys are called to do you're called to speak you're called to stuff that goes on in the school you don't have to let it go on and it's already happening like we hear testimonies every week of these kids doing stuff um Avery Avery has prayed with numerous kids this year I'm telling you boldness on you guys. That's what we're praying for tonight. Boldness for you to walk into your call for this community to be, I believe this community is going to be turned around and it's going to be from y'all. Like you're leading the way. Like you're leading the way and a boldness. And um, anyway, and Caleb came home and I called him a faith posse. But he said, he told me, like, five or six other kids that they walked around on the playground yesterday. And they said, hey, do you want to go to some, I think it was Jaylee came and said, hey, do you guys want to go tell some people about Jesus? And all five or six of them, yeah, let's go do it. So they're walking around the playground going and telling people about Jesus. Like, forget playing on the playground. Let's go win people for Jesus. Guys, this is amazing. And I just want to empower you kids and you youth, like, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep following the voice of the Spirit, what He tells you to do, whether it seems like something little or something big. Obey the voice of the Spirit. When He tells you to lay hands on someone, when He tells you to pray for your teacher, when he, whatever He tells you to do, you guys do it. You guys do it. Do you have something? You want to share? I think it's really cool looking at all you kids. <laughs> kind of like mama and dad up here. Boy, I want to just talk to you kind of like that. 
you know, we're talking about God has a great plan for your life. He wants to use you so big. And where it all starts is just learning to listen. The Bible says that his kids, his children, know his voice. And so I would say even not to just these children, but to you as children, you know your father's voice. You might have said, I struggle to hear. You might have said, I, I'm not sure if that was the Lord. But let me just encourage you in this. With your children, take time to ask your kids, to ask your wife, to ask your spouse, what is God saying? What is, what is the Lord saying? And you know, you guys, you young people, you hear the Lord's voice more than, more than you recognize even now. You hear it all the time. It's the Bible says it's that still small voice. It's the knowing inside. It's, your, it's in your heart. And so practicing getting into your heart or just listening to what your heart is saying. Listen, if the, the devil knows that if he can distract you and get you, in a sense, in a place where you're thinking about everything else, he'll get you to not listen to your heart. But to be used by God, you don't have to know anything but how to follow. I, this is one of the coolest things as, you're, as you grow up and in, 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 in kids' class, you get coloring sheets and, and there's, like, there's lines that, to show you how to begin to color and, and, and what to color in and you make these shapes and all you got to do is kind of follow the lines and you can make this amazing picture until... You can begin to draw all on your own. Listen, all you have to do, listen, when we're talking about God's plans for your life, is learning, just learn to do this. Learn to follow. And when the Lord speaks to your heart, when he says something about to you to tell your mama, maybe you'll, you're supposed to tell your mama something. And you get it in your heart. All you got to do is follow that. And guess what? God will show up and do awesome things. And so, um, man, I just tell you, just, we're just, I'm just so thankful um, for what God is doing and for just seeing all these kids. Let me just tell you, talk to the youth. The Lord's proud of you. He loves you. I want you to close your eyes. Everyone in here, I, this is not just even for youth, but this is specifically to youth. This is some, this is for um, for some men and some women even. But the, I, I see a man even. I see a I see a man in my heart, and I. But I, this is youth. Listen, I want you to see the eyes of Jesus, filled with love and admiration for you. He'd say this to you. I love you. And I'm so proud of you. He'd say, that's my boy. That's my boy. That's my boy. Hey, that's my boy. He'd say, that's my girl. That's, that's my girl right there. That's, that's my girl. Oh, wow. Look at my, this is, that's my girl. I love you so much. Don't disqualify yourself because God hasn't. He's saying this again. You might be saying, really me? Could he do, could he use me? Not only could he, he wants to. And he has great plans to do so because you're his child. Thank you, Lord. Okay.
okay, I don't know the best way to do it, but I we do want to pray for all of um, the kids and the youth. So I don't know if the ushers want to. talk um, as you guys if you can listen while you walk Um, but um, I think it's really cool for you guys to see how much God loves you that he'd orchestrate tonight just for you you know that and um, I text um, Pastor Joni to let um, her know that I wanted you guys in here tonight, and I said, I just feel like there's something significant about the service tonight, and um, do y'all know your youth pastors are amazing? And you know that there's a lot of um, prayer that goes behind the scenes, and i um, thankful for that, and she was in there today, during the day, and she was praying over in the youth building. And she said, some of the things that I was led to pray out are a fire being lit in their hearts, boldness, callings, destinies, and purposes fulfilled. This is before I even told her y'all were coming in here. Experiencing God, that he would be real to them, every service being a place of his presence and glory, specific and direct words to them. And I saw them up front at the altar. Look where y'all are standing. And she said, I agree, he does want to move tonight. And I just found it so interesting because the scripture the Lord gave me was Luke 3.16. And I don't have it, I don't have my Bible out in front of me, but the end phrase um, talks about being filled with Holy Ghost and fire. And that's the phrase that I got for you guys tonight is filled with Holy Ghost and fire on the inside. And... Um, She got the same thing, which I just thought was so cool. And then I want to read one more scripture. Acts 2.17, it says, This is what I will do in the last days. This is Peter when he preached um, his sermon and he was prophesying. And so do you know Peter's prophecy still is coming true today? It's not past. It's today. You know, God's word, when it's spoken, it still continues to create. It still continues to work no matter how old it is. So Peter prophesied this in Acts 2, 17. This is what I will do in the last days. We're in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on everybody and cause your sons and daughters to prophesy. And your young men will see visions and your old men will experience dreams from God. The Holy Spirit will come upon all my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. I will reveal startling signs and wonders in the sky above and mighty miracles on the earth below. Blood and fire and pillars of clouds will appear for the sun will be turned dark and the moon blood red before the great and awesome appearance of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So what does it mean to even prophesy? It just simply means this, to speak what God is speaking. And now more than ever, I believe the Lord wants you to know your Father's voice. Because there are things you're to speak that God said about your life. Listen, about your friends, about your mom and about your dad, about about your future. You are to be saying what God says about yourself about tomorrow, about your family, about your friends. And so that's what it means to, to, to prophesy. It means to say what God is saying, to declare boldly what God is saying. It's not a spooky thing. It's not a strange thing. It's something that really we should be more accustomed to. 
we should talk a little bit more about and it should just be like, what is God saying? And you realize that is you declaring what God is saying. It's like God's speaking it right here on the earth so that he can have his way. So God wants to do something tonight. And what does it say? Those who hunger and thirst will be filled. And so your job is not the filling part. That's God's job. Your job is just to say, Lord, I receive. And my mom would always teach it to us like this. And it's so simple. You picture it like you're taking in a big drink of water. Have you ever been really thirsty before? And when you have that water or Mountain Dew or energy drink or whatever you drink, when you have that, it quenches that thirst and you take it in. That's how you take in. Like when we come and lay hands on you, you just receive. You just picture yourself taking in what God has given you. Can you guys do that? Okay. So we'll start over here. And then as soon as the youth are done, we can start bringing the kids up. Is that good? I want to say one more thing. Um, we may speak something over you, okay? Or you may, we just may pray over you, but you may hear the Lord speak something to you. And it's important that you guys get out, like, when you go sit down, you get out a device or you get out a notebook or you get something and you write down the date, okay? The date, where you are at, and then what God speaks to you, Okay? Because it's important. Sometimes you'll think you'll remember and you won't. And so it's really important that whatever God speaks to you, that you honor it. You honor it by writing it down so that you can go back and be reminded of it. Okay? Church, let's just uh, go ahead and, for the lack of a better word, couple your faith with what's going on. Stretch out your hand, pray in tongues. 
Do whatever the Lord's telling you to do when it comes to this. This is our youth. This is our future generation. So let's just engage with what the Lord is doing.
let's just all stand. And we're just going to give God praise tonight. Aren't you thankful for the Lord and the Holy Spirit? And you remember, guys, you write down what he spoke to you tonight, okay? And if you can't write yet, you can tell Mommy and Daddy. They'll write it down for you. But let's just lift our hands tonight. Father, we worship you. We thank you. Let's just give them high praise. I just sense that. Just high praise. Thank you, Lord. We magnify you. We lift you high. Oh, thank you, Lord. You are great. And you are greatly to be praised. Thank you, Lord. We magnify you. And we thank you for every word that was spoken tonight. Every seed that was planted, growing and bearing much fruit. Destinies being seen and walked out tonight. And we thank you for it. We give you honor and we give you praise. We thank you for the work that you're doing here at Beyond Church and in this generation. And we say thank you, Lord. And continue to fan the flame. Continue to stir it up. Oh, thank you, Lord. Working together. Working together. A greater working together. Thank you, Lord. By your spirit. By your spirit. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I think the kids need to be dismissed first to go back to class so we can make sure they end up with the right parent. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. Okay, um, Pastor Nate just wanted me to encourage you guys that these moments with your kids and what they received tonight, talk about it, talk about it with them. And then also just those moments throughout the day of, you know, whether you're around the dinner table or you're driving to work or whatever, you're in the car and take the time to help. Um, there's so much that kids see and there's so much that they hear. But our job as parents is to help train them. Like he, he says, prime the pump. So it may be a little bit of like, okay, what's God saying? And they're going, oh, I don't know. Don't stop there. Help them prime the pump. Help them learn to take a moment and hear. And you know what? If you have to, like we do it in the car sometimes, and I don't know if it's like the morning time or whatever, but sometimes it's like, oh, I don't know. And we'll just put on worship music for a few minutes, and we'll just kind of all like sit in the car quiet. And it's like, okay, what's God saying? What's he saying today? And then it's amazing how it starts to come up. And you may have to take the lead, mom and dad. You may have to take the lead in saying, this is what God's saying to me. Or this is what God's saying to me about you, to your son or to your daughter. But encourage them. And don't let fear, like let's train them to how to overcome fear. And how do we overcome fear with faith? Well, if, if it was just easy, it wouldn't require faith, right? So just practicing, and that's the safest environment is inside your home to do these things. And so sometimes, um, and I say this a lot, but so if you want to hear the Lord's voice, don't listen for yourself. Listen for somebody else. So many times you get, you've already thought of so many different ways, and there's so many voices concerning the situation that you're currently in that you struggle to recognize the voice of God for yourself. Um, but if you would begin to listen for somebody else, You'd sharpen your ear to hear God's voice. And, and I'll tell you, like, when just you just, you, and for your children or for, for someone, I'll tell you, we, we do this all the time. You know, and if you, the kid, your kids, sometimes, sometimes they just don't want to engage the same way sometimes you don't want to engage. Let's just be real. Sometimes you just don't want to take the time to listen because it just, 
you got to get quiet and you don't want to get quiet. You want to veg. You don't want to listen. How many of you know to listen, it takes work? You got to turn it on. In other words, you got to check. You got to get quiet, but you got to check with your heart. And, it, and it, it, you can't just veg. And so many times you're like, God, just give it to me. God, just do it. And he says, no, listen. And you say, God, no, just do it. God, just do it. And he says, no, I just need you to listen. You say, God, I just want you to do it. And he says, no, I just need you to listen. Sometimes he'll say something to you. You say, Lord, I just give this to you. I just want you to take it. And the Lord might say, I, no, I, I want you to sing through this. And you're like, yeah, but Lord, you know, I just, I just want to give it to you. And the Lord's like, no, I, I, I want you to sing it. I want you to sing through this. And I'm telling you, if you'll learn to respond in those moments when they're difficult and they're hard and you might just not know how to get all the way there. I was sharing this and I'm just going to close with this and we're going to dismiss you. But I was sharing this um, just with our, our staff and just kind of a conversation, just these deep conversations, right? Uh, with, with just kind of things that are going on in my heart. Have you ever seen The Secret Garden? There's a, there's a, a show called The Secret Garden. Or if you've ever seen an English garden and, it, you know, these big, tall ivy walls. And, like, there's things that are going on on the other side of the wall that you don't know about. And a lot of times, if you could see it from above, it would look like a maze. And God wants to take you and I into the opening of that maze. But so many times, we, we, we would say this. I get in there, and I go left, I go right. I don't want to get lost. And he wants us just to, it's like you can sense him going in there. But oftentimes, we're like, well, did he? Did I just sense him going in there? And we're, we're unwilling to take the, that step and go in and go around the next corner and we'll find that he just wants to continue to take us where our hearts desire. I just would tell you, like, when the Lord is, 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 you get that sensing of him saying something, stop and investigate. Stop and, inv and investigate. And so many times things are so busy, but let me tell you, it can, you can be in the loudest place and the hey can still be heard. It can still be heard. And I just would say this, stop and investigate. When you get the, that little hey, listen, you might be going crazy in the car. You might have just lost your temper. You might have just said some things to your kid that you wish you could take back. Stop and just watch the Lord take you into a place, take you down to a place where only he can and where he can do only what he could do in your life for your children. Listen, unlocking pathways, bringing answers that you didn't, you just couldn't see the forest through the trees. Listen, you couldn't see the answer because of all the, the, the walls. So anyway, just wanted to encourage you, pause. And one of the things that we do a lot of times with our kids, we'll just say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to wait until 8.55. It's like 8.51, right? in the car and then we're gonna we'll say that so we'll just put on that worship music and just take that time and um, I'll tell you it's so important for us to practice we, t we teach our kids at home to read they're like oh read 10,000 words well, are we teaching our kids to hear because at the end of the day what we're doing with our kids is we're teaching them listen to transfer dependence where they're no longer to be dependent on mom and dad they're to be dependent upon God and you know they know my voice well but do they know their other father? Do they know their father? I need to teach them that. And if, if you struggle with that, then you know what that just means? You get to get quiet. And you can do it together. All right? God bless you guys tonight. We're so excited to see you Sunday morning. And uh, other than that, we'll have a great week.